A powerful June storm system crossing the country, bringing with it all hazards from strong wind to large hail and even the potential of tornadoes. But it's what's behind this storm system that has my attention. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Thursday, June 19th. And uh, again, hopefully we're having a wonderful day out there. We do have some active weather that we do need to discuss. Uh, we've got this pretty strong storm system currently working through the country, but behind it, more storm systems and a dome of heat that's likely to build in and bring unseasonably warm temperatures. And when you get unseasonably warm in late June, yeah, that's going to be brutally hot and brutally muggy for some folks. I'll be breaking that down for you in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Also, go ahead, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, slash X, whatever you'd like to call it. The link for that is right in the description. It'll say, check out my socials. You'll click that link tree, and then you can just click the Facebook emblem or the X symbol for Twitter uh, on there, and that'll take you right to my page. I post there frequently. I post a lot of cool things there that you might not see on the YouTube channel. And uh, again, I think it's a great resource for all of you to have. All right, let's go and dive on into things and start talking weather. And yeah, no better way to do it than to start with our satellite loop like we normally do. Upper level water vapor loop today. And yeah, you can see what's happening out there quite well. We've got this big area of spin uh, kind of up near Michigan right now and pulling up uh, really right through the St. Lawrence River Valley. It's to the south of that uh, that we have plenty of instability building in. And with that instability at the surface, we have upper level instability as well on a diverging side of a trough. And uh, yeah, that's a double trouble. And that's going to mean strong to severe storms today. The main hazard being those strong straight line winds. Now behind it, I do want you to notice here, uh, we've got this big area of high pressure back out towards the Rockies and towards the west. And right on the outer edge of that here is our ring of fire that's beginning to redevelop back out west. And it's that circled corridor that could see the effects from it over the coming days as a powerful storm system combining with that upper level ridge work in tandem to produce severe weather here coming up in just a couple of days, really as early as uh, today and tomorrow, honestly. All right, let's take a look at radar imagery out there. Again, most of the active weather at the surface is east of the Mississippi right now, and I do mean pretty active. We've got rain from uh, Michigan, from Canada, all the way back down through Mississippi and Alabama, left over uh, a complex of storms from last night, now working through uh, portions of southern and central uh, Mississippi and Alabama there. Uh, let me know if you live there what you're seeing. We've got some rain showers left over here into the Virginias, the Appalachia chain up into Ohio. And uh, speaking of Ohio, pretty feisty storms there yesterday, didn't you? Have them uh, if you're watching from that area. Let me know what you saw yesterday. If you're anywhere that saw some of those storms, let me know if they were pretty strong or if you had any warnings issued. I uh, always love to kind of get those reports from you folks. But it's out in front of this today that we need to watch. And again, depending on when you're watching this today, the threat may already be over. But either way, this will be useful information for you because we'll be talking about the days ahead as well. Uh, but again, it's that circled area today that you can see will be the main culprit of active weather. And if you take a look at it out there, yeah, we've got plenty of uh, active alerts on the map. Notice out west, you see those uh, things beginning to build? And I'll add even, we do have excessive heat watches up here as well. Uh, it's not showing up on the map, but we do have that in that circled area as well. Uh, you can see, though, those red flag warnings, those heat advisories, those summertime uh, warnings and advisories being issued and starting to bubble up here uh, back out west of the Mississippi and even a couple areas here along the I-95. Yeah, it's the start of summer. If you think the map is colorful now, wait till we get to next week. You're going to see a lot more uh, orange on this map, I think, than maybe you'd like to see uh, by the time we move the calendar from this week into next week. All right, let's take a look at those upper level maps one more time. Uh, different maps, I should say, though. And uh, today's threat and start breaking down that threat of severe weather today and then take a look at the rest of the week ahead and what it could bring. Yeah, you know what time it is. It's upper level vorticity time. My favorite map to use really any time of the year, but it's especially useful right now. And you can see, yeah, a pretty well defined trough that I was telling you about earlier. I'll draw it here and uh, dash it in that pink color. And uh, that's that system that's bringing that active weather here to the East Coast today. And uh, if you're new to the channel, we'll go ahead and break this down for you very briefly. Basically, the left hand side here is where we have upper level convergence that creates sinking motion and surface high pressure or generally uh, nicer conditions. Uh, condi Conditions. On the right hand side, uh, that's where we have upper level divergence or lift at the surface. And generally, this is where low pressure forms. This is where your storm systems form. And this is where we have the highest likelihood of seeing severe weather. And that's exactly how it's going to line up today. So uh, that's kind of the upper level setup as we go through the day today. Sorry, the map just kind of flew ahead there. Uh, this is going to continue to work east. And by the time we're into tomorrow afternoon, we then get on that left hand side 
or that convergent side of the map and things again become uh, much more calm. But we got to get through today first. And we do have, again, uh, that threat level issued from the Storm Prediction Center, a level three out of five now, an enhanced risk for severe weather from New York City uh, all the way down through all of New Jersey into the I-95 cor uh, corridor, Philly, Baltimore, uh, speaking of Philly, go birds, right? Uh, and all the way down into D.C. and Richmond. Uh, yeah, wind is going to be the main threat today. And I do think this is a warranted enhanced risk. I don't think this is one that they're just kind of throwing around willy-nilly. I do agree. Uh, the hail threat today, we'll start with that. Not very high in the east. Now back out towards the northern plains. Could see storms with uh, some large hail here. Uh, into North Dakota, back into Minnesota, and even portions of Wisconsin. The tornado threat, uh, yeah, just rocking a 2% area, so not nothing. Could definitely see some quick spin-ups. I don't expect any long-track violent tornadoes or anything like that, but could see a couple tornadoes anywhere from Maine all the way back down again to Virginia. The wind threat, though, that's where it's at today. We have that 30% uh, area of potentially uh, strong to damaging winds right in that corridor of I-95 I mentioned earlier, but anybody could see strong winds from, again, the St. Lawrence River Valley all the way back down to the Carolinas uh, under the gun today as well. So uh, and same thing back up into the plains. Again, could see some strong gusty winds with some storms out that way as well. So that's kind of the setup. Uh, again, one that's definitely going to lead, I think, to severe weather. Let's switch on over now, take a look at some mesoscale models and break down that guidance. All right, let's time out this complex of storms today. And you can see, yeah, we've got that pretty big surface low pressure right up into Canada. And it's everywhere south of there that uh, that cold front is creating lift in the atmosphere. Now, here we go this evening. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in today's forecast. I'll just tell you ahead of time. Now, a higher certainty further north. We're going to have pretty widespread storm coverage up into New England, into the Mid-Atlantic. That's where those strong storms could develop. I think one big question, though, is storm mode today. This is the high-resolution rapid refresh model, or the HRRR, as you might hear it referred to oftentimes, um, showing a little bit more of a discrete mode. Now, today, that doesn't necessarily mean the tornado threat will be higher just because storms are discrete, but uh, it means, you know, maybe not everyone will quite get it as bad. In fact, you see a big portion there of northern New Jersey that doesn't really get strong storms, even though they're in the enhanced risk and shows really not much south of the Greensboro Triad and Triangle areas of North Carolina, uh, besides maybe a couple scattered storms. Uh, that's the herd. Now, if you take a look at the NAM, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more widespread with its coverage today. Uh, you'll notice down into the Carolinas, it's a full-blown QLCS from uh, really DC all the way back down into Columbia. Uh, it's got uh, then more scattered convection further north. So uh, a lot of questions to be answered today. And unfortunately, just the way that the science is, it's not really going to get answered until it happens. Uh, if we go back one more time again and take a look at radar imagery, you could see uh, already, I would say, becoming pretty linear, which I think will make storms a little more widespread than some of the models might be showing. In fact, our in-house graph model uh, has shown much more of a widespread picture today. So uh, all sorts of different options on the table here for how this uh, pans out today. But either way, again, the storms are going to move through. They're going to bring strong gusty winds, a uh, couple areas of maybe some small hail and maybe a quick spin ups up into New England, uh, anywhere kind of north of the Mason Dixon line, having the highest chance of that today. The good news tonight, we clear on out and here we go waking up tomorrow morning. We're all clear here really east uh, of the Appalachian chain besides some leftover rain up into New England, but the severe threat uh, again gone at that point. Now, as that happens, notice back into the plains, uh, the northern plains. In fact, let me back it up a little bit and uh, show you this afternoon. Uh, getting to see some of those storms developing this afternoon and evening. Large hail, straight line winds will be the main threat there. And then it turns into a complex of storms overnight. And this is the start of that ring of fire pattern, folks. And you'll see it again tomorrow. Here is your Friday afternoon. I notice a lot drier for most of us, maybe a couple of scattered showers uh, or even storms. But again, here's that ring. It's that back inside of this uh, high pressure. Again, here's your high. Here's kind of that flow around it with surface low uh, and kind of just upper level pieces of short waves going around it. And that's what we'll need to watch for these pockets of afternoon complexes of storms to develop. There's another big complex tomorrow night, uh, again, that goes really right through the same areas. And that's just going to be the theme through the coming days, folks. Um, I don't really think we'll veer much from that pattern here throughout the weekend. All right, let's talk about next week now uh, when I think things uh, kind of switch up a little bit. Severe weather staying, but then the heat building in. Let's talk about the setup for that here uh, coming up next. 
All right, we're going back to old reliable. Here's that upper level vorticity map and notice what happens. Again, uh, we've got just this big ribbon or this highway or corridor of short wave pieces of energy. This is for Friday afternoon. Uh, that's what we need to watch for that potential of some of these stronger storms to develop. Uh, and we're gonna have a lot of lift here. Again, we've got a very strong upper level low pressure here. We've got a big area of divergence or lift out in front of it. Um, I think it's gonna be a pretty stormy period out there into the Northern Rockies, into the Northern Plains. Uh, we're talking Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, areas like that really could get in on the action here. Notice uh, that doesn't really change, folks. It's just more the same wave after wave after wave, big high pressure building in over the southeast and just creating this corridor through the northern tier of the country. It's going to have the highest chance of strong to severe storms to continue uh, up that way really throughout the next week. And in fact, even just the next couple of days, you can see here is uh, the outlook from the Storm Prediction Center for tomorrow. That's the same area that's under the gun <laughs> up here into that corridor from Montana into uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, even uh, the upper peninsula there of Michigan. And uh, if you look at the tornado threat, yeah, pretty notable tomorrow. I'd say Fargo, Bismarck, uh, Fergus Falls, St. Cloud, that corridor could definitely see a couple tornadoes, probably photogenic potentially, uh, depending on how storm mode goes. But also large wind and hail will be a threat tomorrow. Let's kick this over to Saturday, the start of the weekend, and guess what? It's that same ring or corridor through the northern tier of the country where we've got some upper level energy and surface energy overlapping and creating that potential for strong to severe storms that we'll need to watch really through the weekend, but uh, really all the way through next week, folks, is going to be that same corridor here through the northern tier of the country. Now, while that's happening, the heat builds into the southeast, and let's switch on over now and take a look at that. All right, here's a graphic I actually made at work last night. And uh, again, if you missed it, I am a, an on-air meteorologist now at WCCB News Charlotte. So uh, if you live locally, tune in. You can uh, always catch uh, my updates on the weekends on uh, television. You can also stream us on our app, so definitely check that out. And if you live uh, outside of the Charlotte market, I also do uh, the weekend news in Columbia at ABC Columbia for their 11 o'clock show. So you can check that out. And if you live outside of those two places, you can always stream in the app. Uh, and you might just catch me on television. But uh, the heat dome building, that's the storyline here. This is today. Again, notice we have this kind of dip in the jet stream here uh, over the northeast. That's what's creating those storms. But as we move ahead into time, uh, watch how this kind of unfolds. We'll get it into the weekend. Here's Saturday. That dip moves off uh, and out of here. But then a big ridge begins to build in. And the brighter the colors, the warmer the temperatures are at the surface uh, with this sort of setup. And that just locks into place, folks. It stays there Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Yeah, we're locked into this dome of heat. And uh, trust me, it's going to be one that you feel, I think, for a lot of us uh, east of the Mississippi, especially in the southeast, the mid-Atlantic as well. Uh, and portions of the northeast, we'll say New York City southbound, uh, really going to feel this uh, in a big way throughout the coming week. Another thing you're going to feel are the dew points at the surface. Here is our muggy meter. Again, the higher the number, the more uh, just not so well it feels outside, uh, the more heavy the air feels. Check this out by Saturday. We're talking dew points in the upper 70s into the Midwest. Uh, not fun. Not what you want to see. And it just locks into place, folks. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Uh, yeah, that's the that's summertime is what that is. <laughs> uh, just locks in. It's going to be muggy for just about everyone in the usual suspect places. East of the Rockies, uh, south of the Great Lakes, or really the Great Lakes included in that. Yeah, oppressive summer heat and mugginess on the way. And uh, the Climate Prediction Center sees it as well. The six to 10 day temperature probability outlook. Uh, yeah, we're at a 90% chance of seeing above average temperatures over uh, Pennsylvania, the Virginias, uh, into Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, all the way back down into North Carolina. It's going to feel brutal out there. So go ahead and get ready. Another side effect of that is a lack of rain. Now, again, most of this DC is really going to fall today uh, with today's system. Now, outside of Florida, the sea breeze will do its action. We'll probably get some sea breeze action even into the Carolinas and just the Gulf Coast in general. But if you go further inland than that, uh, we're going to get a big dome of dry air for the next week or so, I'd say, in that circled area. Now, not to say it'll be dry the entire time, but mostly... This looks like a pretty dry pattern here for the Ohio Valley, the, App uh, the Appalachia chain here of the Virginias, North Carolina. Again, outside of today when the storm is working through all the way back down into the Red River Valley of Texas. Now, now the question you might be wondering is, Gerald, how hot is hot? Check out next Monday, this coming Monday afternoon, 
triple digits potentially, and that's not your feels like, that's your actual temperature. You have that humidity and those dew points I showed you earlier. We're gonna have heat index values past 105 likely into portions of the mid-Atlantic. I'm talking about my friends in Virginia, the Carolinas, uh, gonna get in on that action even down to Georgia, but you get surface temperatures at 98 in Charlotte, a dew point of 70. Yeah, have the water ready and you really, you start to get to the point where you just don't even really wanna go outside past 10 a.m. Uh, to about uh, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. So. Uh, it's going to be brutal. That's Monday, and uh, it goes nowhere, folks. By Tuesday, 100 degrees potentially in Baltimore, uh, Philadelphia, New York City, upper 90s, Boston, mid to upper 90s, uh, Virginia, brutal, the Ohio Valley, brutal, back into Texas. Yeah, it's going to be hot. So uh, that's going to be the storyline moving forward. And again, still the severe weather to the north, but for the majority of us, uh, the heat is going to be the story as we end out June here over the next two weeks or so. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's all I got for you on this Thursday. Again, hopefully you enjoyed it. I know the video has been coming out a little bit later. I've worked the past three nights, um, which my shifts are usually 3 p.m. to uh, whenever my last show is over. So that'll be the theme. But again, this is just for the training period. As we go ahead, it'll mainly be just Saturdays and Sundays with a couple other days mixed in uh, here into Charlotte. So again, we're going to keep the videos going here on YouTube. Like I said, follow me on Facebook for updates. Uh, Same thing for Twitter. But with that said, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. I'll see you all tomorrow.